Welcome to part three of our gear wig modeling guide for the Sacro Vault battle engine. Last time we handled all the washes on the vault, but still needed to handle the gators who had been highlighted. We're going to use this green wash mixed with a black wash to darken it down. And then we're going to make it really thin, about a one to one wash to water ratio. I want this very thin. I don't want it to leave smudges on these gators. As we see when we apply it here, I want sort of a nice sheen across it, like a glaze, but I don't want big splotchy pools. I don't want smears, anything like that. I want it to pool in the cracks in between his muscles. I definitely want it in all of the scales. So I very carefully push it evenly over the entire model. I'm very careful for it not to pool in the highlighted areas. I'm careful for it not to leave smudges. Uh, I want to keep all the highlights we worked really hard to, on, but I just want to pick out the scales and the shadowy areas. When it's done, though not dried, it'll look like this. You notice compared to someone we haven't hit with a wash yet, his highlights are toned down a bit and the scales pop out a little bit. When this dries, it'll be even a little darker. We'll do the same to our bokur here. Careful not to let the washes pool too much. We'll also hit his underbelly. This will uh, highlight the scales there by having the wash pool into the cracked areas. It also tint the underbelly down a little bit. Remember when we started, the underbelly was quite yellow. But uh, by the time we're done with all this, it'll sort of be a yellowy shade of green. It also makes the blend from the green into the yellow look a little better when there's a wash applied over it. We'll move back to the vault elements now, and we'll start highlighting all the raised elements. I want to start with the spooky skulls now that the wash has dried. I've decided to use some Citadel dry paint. I've never used this before, but I really like the color here. This hellion green is a really nice spooky green color. So I want the raised edges of the spooky skulls to be highlighted that color. But it's weird, this dry stuff is really pasty. I'm not sure if I got a particularly old bottle or if it's supposed to be like this, but it came out sort of the consistency of, I don't know, like silly putty. I had to scoop it out with a, the back of my brush. Like a regular brush wouldn't get it. I had to get this little wad out. And see, I can roll it around in my hand. It doesn't even leave pigment. So I wasn't exactly sure how to paint this. Uh, instructions say you're just supposed to jam your brush in there and let it fill up with pigment, but that didn't seem to be working. So what I did do is throw it in a palette and add just a teeny bit of water. Like I just wet my dry brush here. I didn't even, I didn't put a full load, full load of water. I just got a little bit damp and then mixed it around in that dry paint. And it immediately turned into a very pasty paint substance that you could easily absorb with your brush and use to dry brush. So right out of the bottle, it was almost useless, but just the smallest amount of water made it uh, work perfectly. It ends up looking like this, super thick and pasty, but the brush will pick it up and you can just cram it all up in the bristles there and it'll make for a nice dry brush. Uh, this is a cruddy old brush I have. I didn't want to use a new brush here. And uh, this kind of paint would end up ruining brushes, I think. I'm careful to rigorously wipe the brush on a paper towel to get most of the paint off like you normally do with dry brushing. And then I lightly uh, pass over the tops of the skulls. Right away it starts to look great. I really like this color a lot. I wasn't sure dry brushing these would be the way to go, but I didn't want to individually pick out every little detail. 
So this is a much lazier way to get a highlight onto all these little skulls. And I'm happy I did, because it ended up looking better than I thought it might have. Sometimes dry brushing looks uh, speckly, like the way our stone did, and that's not an effect you want. And I wasn't sure I wanted it on these skulls, but it looked fine. Uh, and just like with normal dry brushing, the more you pass over an area, the higher, uh, the brighter the highlight will get. So I'm uh, sure to hit the tops of these skulls over and over again to make sure they're the brightest and there's sort of a smooth gradient back down to the dark areas. But with these three elements, the base, the wash, and the dry brushed highlight, we add a really nice effect to these skulls. Uh, a darker, a medium, and a lighter area right away that look great for very little work. So uh, this turned out all right. And all told, we ended up looking like this. Accidentally splashing around some of the stone edges is okay because we'll be adding a glow effect anyway. It was a little harder to get in on these uh, bottom skulls, but we did the best we could. Next we'll highlight the bone skulls. I didn't want to use dry brushing for this, I just used some Screaming Skull, a very light bone color. I mixed it to a normal consistency, a little like milky, and I used a fine detail brush and I just tried to hit all the edges. Anywhere light would hit, any raised edge, uh, the bone areas around eye sockets, stuff like that. And just like with the spooky skulls, we'll have three elements here, we'll have a uh, a dark wash, a medium base, and then these light highlights, so it adds a lot of depth for very little work. And when we're done, they look like this. So, some nice depth there. I then start highlighting the candles. The same way we used five colors, I'm going to use five highlights, which are just lighter versions. So this sort of pink I'm using on the purple. Each candle has a dripping wax element on top of it. So that's all I'm painting. I'm just highlighting the top of the candle, a lighter version of that, to make it look, look like the, uh, the wax is melting and dripping off it. So it adds a little color to the candle, it picks out that highlight that's already molded on there. This was a real easy step that uh, made the candles look a lot better. When the candles are done, I paint all the flames bright yellow. And then I'll go over them again and paint the tips, the tops of the flames, uh, pure white to add a little flame effect for not a lot of work at all. Now we're going to try the glow effect on the skulls. This can be tricky, but I took the same spooky green we base coated the skulls with and I thinned it way, way down. And you can see I'm applying it here to the edges much thinner than normal wash. Uh, if you're not sure how thin to do it, make it even thinner than you think. Super, super thin. And I paint it all over the areas where I expect the skulls to glow onto the stone. You can see when it's super thin like this, the stone color and the stone little speckles and the textures still show through the green, but they get tinted into a kind of green. Now with a wash, it's going to want to pool into the cracks. You can see it trying to pool there. We have to pick those pools up with a dry brush and make sure they don't stay. We do not want this color to pool into the cracks. Imagine a glowing skull isn't going to, the light isn't going to get focused into a crack. It's going to be on the outer edges and the cracks are going to stay dark. So unlike say when we wash the bone in the skulls where we could just dump it on and let the wash do the work for us, with this glow effect we have to be very careful. We apply it to all the raised areas in a very light fashion and then are quick to pick it up if it falls into a crack, if it falls in between. Uh, there are a whole bunch of little cracks and stuff here that we don't want to glow green. So we apply a little wash and then we scoop out some more and go like that. 
We do the same along the top element of the altar. I don't even bother trying to put a glow effect to the left and right side of these skulls. There are all those indented symbols there, and it would just pool in there. And all I would do is be scooping it out of that area. Like, I want those to stay black. So if I try to put the wash on those little symbols, they'll just quickly turn green, and I'll be desperately trying to scoop out the green, and it won't add any effect. You can see here I get some into that crack at the top, and I have to scoop it out fast. Because if it stays in there, I'll have a glowing green crack, which I don't want. I just want this glow effect all in the raised areas of the stone near the skulls. I let it dry and then did a second layer, and it came out like this. If I wanted it to be even brighter, I would do a third layer, and so on. You have to start so thin that you usually require layers for it to show up nicely. Now I'm going back to that dry brush, and I'm hitting the hard edges, sort of where the glow might first hit an edge near a skull. So this adds a little depth to our, our uh, glow effect, so it's a little brighter, almost bright white on some areas. The finished glow effect looks like this. If we wanted more glowing, I just would have done more layers, but I was pretty happy with that and stuck with it. I also hit all the other elements up here with details, like the guy on the top and the various junk hanging from it, the occasional shriveled head, stuff like that. There was a snake coming out of one of the skulls, I had to paint him. Just any element here that I thought needed a highlight, the vines I put a lighter brown on and so forth. But I wanted to make sure every element had at least a couple colors worth of depth there. I did the same for the gators. Gave him eyes, put some blood on his knife. They have a whole bunch of trinkets and feathers and junk hanging from them, so I make sure I hit each one of them with the occasional highlight or wash. The big brutes on the back were easy. They only had a couple other elements, some ropes on their wrists and stuff. But they're done. I'm going to do the base last. I decided to keep the base really simple, mainly because the altar is so big you won't see much of it, and also I'm super lazy. So whatever lazy way I can get this base done, I'm going to. I'm going to end up gluing some play sand on top of it. Uh, I'll start with this brown base coat, just so that uh, little spaces in between the sand where some of the base might show through won't look stark black like this. It'll just look like the same color of the sand. So this uh, this coat doesn't have to be uh, particularly well painted or thick or even or anything. I just want to make sure that the gaps in between the sand look brown and they'll end up looking like this. I then paint the front arc a Strachan green color, the color I use for all my Gatorman front arcs. Battle engines have divided front arcs at 90 degrees. Uh, the Sacral Vault doesn't care about that. He only has one weapon and it's, uh, it's neither on his left or right side. So I didn't bother highlighting the little dash marks in between the two halves, but that's certainly something you can do as it's molded right onto the base like this. But uh, front arc just takes two quick coats to look nice and solid, and that's easy. To glue the sand on here, I'm just going to use some Elmer's glue. I'll water it down about 50-50 glue to water, and then just spread it all over the base. This is the easiest, laziest way to base something, so I'm all about it.
when it's dripping with glue here, I just dump a bunch of play sand on it. I think I got this at an art store or something, but it's pretty easy to find this kind of stuff. After it's dry, I then went on to glue some little grass flock just to add a little bit of flavor to the base. But again, I wasn't too concerned because so little of the base will actually end up showing. Because the altar and the gator standing on it take up a great deal of space. Assembling this together turned out to be quite the pain in the butt. Uh, the bottom and top vault elements fit nicely onto each other and I pinned them. Uh, I had already dry fit the gators to the back before I started painting, so they fit perfectly. But pinning this thing to the base and pinning the gators' feet to the ground ended up proving a problem. The gators' feet were not even with the wheels, uh, a complaint I've heard from other people assembling this model. So I had to cram a couple extra rocks and sand under their feet so they weren't just like their back feet were off the ground or whatever, but it worked out fine. And it ended up looking like this. Taken in total, it looks like a really big, complicated model, but it was easy. Uh, the stone particularly was easy. Uh, I've had people compliment, compliment the stone element, and it was, as we saw, the laziest, easiest part. And everything else is just a matter of base coating and dry brushing, some washes, really basic painting elements. And if you just take it one element at a time, you end up with one big, awesome-looking model. I think maybe the trickiest part were the glow effects that we put on the skulls. I've attempted that before in other models and sort of failed. It usually come out too subtle. Uh, when I first tried it, it was way too stark. It just looked like I'd splashed paint on it and that was bad. And I think the secret is just super, super thin washes like we did, but multiple layers of them. If I really wanted to work on that glow effect, I could have done more and more layers. And each subsequent layer being sort of a smaller part of the glow, so it looks like it's radiating out. Like with most painting stuff, it's just a matter of how much time you want to spend on it. But with a very little amount of time, we got a good effect here, and I like it. Thank you for watching. For more of these guides, battle reports, and articles, check out GearWig.com. You can email me at boss at GearWig.com, or check out our Facebook or Twitter pages. If you want to help the site, tell a friend and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.